start it now and I'll start again. I buried it. I'm always burying that reminder. And that's because slides aren't in the same order and I've got confused. Sorry about that. Again, let's just say welcome to everybody because I've said it once but I'll say it again now we're recording. Um, and say thank you, Michael, who is going to present our last keynote and our last session, I believe, of today. We've had a fantastic day, lots of brilliant sessions. And Michael is going to tell us about his journey with the Global Classroom Project. And Michael's a WA teacher. And strangely enough, I actually know Michael face to face. However, we did meet through Twitter. OK, we wouldn't be doing Aussie Live without our sponsors. Um, it's a Blackboard Collaborate room, obviously. We are, many of us know of the Australia series and are part of it at times. And with Steve Harkerton's Learning Revolution, this is a combined effort. We also need to thank Siva, who are our sponsors, and Coach Carol and Shambles, who've done a terrific amount of work getting all this up and running. OK, I'm now going to hand you over to Michael. And Michael, if you want to do a bit more intro for yourself, please do. I don't like to take too long introducing people. Go for it. All right, no worries. Uh, thanks, Joe. Um, welcome to the uh, last session of the day. It's been a uh, really uh, interesting day, and I'm really glad to be part of it. Um, this presentation uh, is it's going to be a mixture of stories and of sharing the experiences of both of myself, but also of the teachers that I am lucky enough to work with around the world. Um, if I introduce myself, um, I'm a fourth year relief teacher, um, still pretty much looking for a school to call home. Um, this year I'm returning reluctantly to <laughs> postgraduate studies um, and I'm hoping to start my master's degree uh, next year. Um, over the last couple of years I've really found myself becoming a global education leader. Um, it was never something that I necessarily expected uh, or set out to do. Um, but through the through observation, experience, and working with amazing people, um, I've been able to do things that I really never dreamt of doing. Um, I've been a global educator for probably close to two and a half years, um, creating uh, projects, co-founding the global classroom community, um, serving on the board of IA in Australia. Um, and for me, one of the most personally significant milestones was uh, travelling to Qatar, where this picture was taken, um, for the IOM conference uh, last year. Um, as I've been working on various presentations and magazine articles over the last few months, uh, I've become fascinated with the concept of sharing stories. Um, the Global Classroom, I like to think, is a world of stories, not just my own, but of the people from all over the world, from all different backgrounds and education uh, contexts. Um, but today, I'm going to be sharing my story, uh, the story of the Global Classroom and the people and the ideas. Um, which have made it uh, the community and the learning space that it is today. The story actually begins in around about May 2011. Um, I was teaching a grade 6 class for four weeks. I was going back to relief teaching. Um, and I, I knew I wanted to experiment with ICT, but I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. 
and I was sitting on Twitter late one night and I saw a tweet from a lady named Deb Frazier uh, in Ohio, USA. Um, and she wanted to, uh, she was looking for classes around the world to do a global classroom project. So I thought, hey, well, let's give it a go. Um, now, my grade six students were working with grade one, three, and grade four students from different countries in Guatemala, New Zealand, uh, America, and Romania. And they contributed to the voice thread, um, which was the global classroom voice thread. And some of my students created these. These are edgy Globster posters. Um, I was, was quite astonished to discover that my students actually came from about seven different countries. And the young lady whose work this is, she spoke about four languages. Um, this wasn't the most perfect label project, but it, for us it was technically our first major long-term collaborative project. Um, and it was one that my students were still talking about several years later. Now, that Global Classroom 2011 was supposed to be a one-off. Now, the people who know me know that things kind of happened. <laughs> um, I was going back to relief teaching. I didn't have a class to do any projects with, and I thought that would I thought that was going to be it. Um, but when Deb uh, Fraser suggested running the second project, um, she asked me to try and find people from all the continents of the world for a project that would run for the duration of the American school year. So run from roughly August 2011 to um, June 2012. Um, she thought it would be nice, you know, we get a few more classes in. You know, so of course I tweeted that. And when we had 50k to 12 teachers signed up in the course of two weeks, uh, we had to were faced with a situation where we needed to uh, do something different and fast. Um, and inspired really by the Flat Classroom Project, which is now known as Flat Connections, um, I thought, why not try and create a community or create some spa an online space for people to do global collaborative projects? Um, I wasn't particularly keen on running the whole project by myself. I know that sounds rather unusual, but that's reality. Um, so I put out a survey and said, well, how are we going to do it? Um, how do you want to connect and collaborate, and who wants to help? And the response to that survey basically defined the Global Classroom Project as it became. Now, what we did in our in when we started 2011-12, we created the Global Classroom Manifesto. Now, this was asking our teachers what they wanted to get out of the project for their, both as teachers, as learners, and for their students. And what I've broadly summarised that is we've become, we created, a, we wanted to create a space where we could explore new ways to learn, share, connect and collaborate globally, both as teachers and also for our students. Um, we set up a leadership team and we set up our various online spaces on Twitter, Facebook um, and such like. And we set out and we decided, well, let's see how we go. Now, over the course of the last couple of years, our spaces have changed, our projects have changed. Um, we response, in response to feedback from teachers and also from high quality professional development, um, perhaps the most significant being the Flat Classroom Book Club, which I think ran in 2012. Um, so the community evolves. Uh, some of the more significant changes um, included the introduction of a teacher mentoring project for global educators, um, the introduction of lead teacher awards uh, recognising people's contribution to the community, 
And also this year we've started to build community partnerships um, with education charities uh, supporting the SAV school in Nepal. So we've, Global Classroom is not a single project. It's a, a place where teachers come together to create, to learn, and to also to create their own projects. And this has proved to be successful really beyond our wildest dreams. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a moment. I know a number of you in the room here have actually got ex experienced or have, are on the, on the fringes of the Global Classroom Project. Um, so I'll just give you a moment so you can write on the slides. Um, what you, if you're involved in our projects or whether, what, you've, what you know about them. Um, so I'm going to drop the mic and we'll see, give you a couple of minutes. If you're on an iPad and you can't write on the whiteboard, put it in text chat and I'll copy it across for you. It's actually quite interesting um, reading some of the responses here um, because I do actually reflect um, the spirit of the Global Classroom Project, um, which is basically to create a culture of sharing. Um, now we have, we see the uh, I think it's Sue Wyatt who's written about to the Mr. Davo Devil, um, who I actually was lucky enough to meet uh, when it, when he visited Perth. Um, I am still waiting for my scrapbook to be moved on in. I don't know, I've kind of, I've kind of lost it at the moment. <laughs> um, Global Classroom is a, is a place for other people to share their ideas and projects. Um, and to be quite honest, it has been absolutely astounding what people have created or shared through our community spaces, um, particularly through the Global Classroom Chats, which are actually the, this month Global Classroom Chat actually starts immediately after this session. Thanks, Anne. We're probably we're thinking of sending that one to the Northern Territory. I'm not sure yet. All right. Now, the Global Classroom is approaching three years old. Um, we, as we mentioned, you know, we started with seven teachers from five countries. Um, when I last looked at our uh, registration uh, spreadsheets, uh, we have a, nearly 500 teachers from 42 countries um, involved in, in the global classroom community. Um, those are the ones that we know about. Uh, and over the last three years, we've hosted over 
over, well over 40 uh, teachers' projects. Um, this year we have in Global Classroom 2013 14, we actually have about 20, um, which is quite frightening actually uh, to see the sheer growth and diversity um, of the Global Classroom. But, but it, yes, it, it, it develops over time. Um, it's been given the size and the scope of what we've done in a relatively short space of time. Um, it's been quite difficult to actually pick out those projects um, and partnerships which, which stand out because so many of them have made, their, made a difference in the way we work and the way we think about global education. Um, but what I've done is I've tried to pick out some examples um, of global classroom projects that reflect our history and also where we want to take these projects in the years to come. I'm sure you missed lots of interesting things, Veronica. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Um, the Kids Speak Voice Thread, uh, these links should be working, um, the links on the pages. Um, if you would like to go and have a listen. The Kids Speak Voice Thread is based, was the successor to the Global Classroom Voice Thread, um, which started the entire uh, community. Um, when I last looked, this had been viewed over 6,000 times. Um, it was a project where students around the world came together um, of differing ages to answer questions and to discuss what, you know, what it's like to live and to go to school uh, in other countries around the world. Um, so you have students in Guatemala talking with children in New Zealand, Honduras, uh, the United States, Australia, New Zealand. South Africa. Um, it's a truly amazing multicultural discussion um, and this, but this one was very much an early childhood project but it was something that older children could come into as well. The Sunny Thought project uh, was another project. This one was interesting because it was a a reflection of the terrible economic crisis in Greece. Um, it was designed um, by a school principal in Greece who wanted to cheer, basically cheer up her students who lived in a society where doom and gloom and economic, uh, the economic, economic crisis, um, and it was basically involved in sharing things that made them happy, um, things that they found beautiful in the world. And that this project had over 20 schools from about a dozen countries involved. This is one of our surprising projects. One's so this relatively simple idea, but it's often it's the simple ideas which bridge across cultures and countries. Um, Sebastian Panakao is someone that I have known for nearly three years. Um, this gentleman is truly is kind of lost for words with what he does. Um, ever since I Skyped um, with Sebastian and the, the, the Kerala finance minister of Kerala um, a couple of years ago, Sebastian has been teaching uh, teachers and students in India how to uh, for example, teaching English online. Um, students in the local high school will teach English in, as an English tutor online and get paid so many dollars an hour. Um, some of these more recent projects have been absolutely fascinating, like social networking homes, um, which encourages educated stay-at-home mothers to make an income uh, over Skype, sharing local crafts, teaching English, um, and also teaching or having conversations with elderly people in nursing homes who have got nobody else to talk to. Um, Sebastian is an example of an, a leader and an entrepreneur who uses Global Connections to truly make a difference within his local community. Um, and he's one, one of the teachers who I really hope to meet uh, face to face. The 
Penguin Science Project is one that I get, must admit I get quite a kick out of. Um, this is our connection with Antarctica. Um, a connection that we ironically made through someone in Denmark. Um, Stefan Nielsen uh, has been involved in this project for some years and several other um, global classroom teachers have been involved um, Skyping with Jean Penny Cook, uh, a penguin researcher in Antarctica, um, and also sending uh, their country's flags to Antarctica where it's displayed uh, on the Antarctic ice with penguins in the background. Um, and they also uh, can organise um, postcards from Antarctica uh, with the Antarctic uh, postmark. Um, to be frankly honest, I can't wait to have my own class because I would really love to get them involved in this if I can. Um, it runs annually from, I think it's December to February, um, so not quite perfect for uh, Australian school years, but an absolutely fascinating project nevertheless. Um, the Malala project, another project that made a defining impact on the global classroom community. Um, this was a project that I honestly, to be honest, didn't expect to succeed. However, with the passion and creativity of Heidi Hutchinson and her partner teachers um, in Honduras, Taiwan, Japan, and I think um, the, United, it was the United States, this was our first Global Classroom Project, which responded to and involved our students in discussing global or social issues. Um, we had students in Honduras creating videos um, supporting children's right to an education, and they were, these were actually sent to um, Malala, um, Malala's organisation or the organisation working with Malala. We had children in Taiwan and Japan reflecting on what it means to have um, what, what it means to have the right to an education. Um, so this was a multilingual uh, examination of a very important issue and I was extremely proud of the, um, the way of the, both of the students and of the teachers involved because they made they made a project which actually made helped to start to make raise awareness and make a difference. Another favourite is the Travelling Rhinos project, which I'm pretty sure some people in this room have been involved with. Um, created by Karen Stadler, uh, this was actually supposed to be Global Classroom 2012-13. This was a project that was designed to last for a year, um, where Karen uh, sent stuffed rhinos on an international journey around the world. Um, to raise awareness of uh, rhino conservation. Now, these rhinos have been restuffed several times. They've been lost on trains in South Korea, lost in the post to China. They visited over 50 classes in about two dozen countries. Um, we've had students creating sculpting sand rhinos on the beach. We've had children writing to the newspaper in South Korea, um, holding cake stalls and um, creating quilts in the United States. Um, it's a project which helped to take the students beyond merely raising awareness to actually doing something about an issue. Um, this project has actually proven to be so successful that instead of running for one year, it's going to run for at least three. Um, and <laughs> it's, it's been quite an eye-opener. Again, simple idea, using a physical, real-world artefact, but tied to an issue that can be so easily integrated into, into uh, curriculums around the world. Um, it could, English, social studies, it's the whole way of integrating has been amazing. We've also started this year. Well, we've this year we've actually made it formal. Um, 
We're starting to link the global classroom to education charities such as Open World Cause and Project Purist. Um, this stems at a very special relationship we have with Govinda Panthi, who is the director of the SAV school in Nepal. Um, Govinda, these are some of his students, has two laptops and a 256 kilobit internet connection. Um, yet his students are more globally aware and globally connected than most students here in Australia and around the world. Um, what we are doing as Global Classroom is we are involved, involving our teachers initially but also our students in projects which support these students. For example, Open World Cause is dedicated to actually building um, building the, and securing the long-term future of the SAV school and Project Purus is dedicated to providing water filters um, for students at the school and also for orphanages in Nepal. Um, I was actually quite horrified at the uh, water quality which is again a simple, a simple water filter can make such a huge difference. Um, and so we, for example, we have students in Canada raising um, money for to buy water filters. Okay, so linking linking to real world issues, but making the human connection is what is really important here. So, three years of the global classroom. Well, it will be three years. Or well, actually, this yeah, two and a half to three years. What have we learnt? I know that this project has transformed the lives and learning of children around the world and also had an incredible impact on teachers. I know that because I personally can't see, see the world in the same way again. I've learnt some fundamental lessons. Um, perhaps the first one is celebrate the community of people you work with. Focus on building the relationships. Um, we need to recognise that when you're working with passionate, innovative people, who are both thinkers and actually do things, that they change you and they change you for the better. Being a global educator isn't a journey you need to walk alone. Um, and we need to celebrate those relationships and connections. And indeed, this very presentation um, is a celebration of the community that we have. Um, and there's a couple of people, there's at least one person in the room who's uh, here. Um, we learn from each other's mistakes. We learn from each other's successes as well. So we're growing together as both as people and as educators. The second most important lesson is basically to give yourself the time to learn and grow and to develop your skills. Um, building a global classroom, becoming a global educator is a process which takes years. Uh, it's not something you can do overnight. You know, the more I learn, the more I do, the more I realise I've got how much more I actually have left to explore. Um, I've seen global classroom teachers literally transform from people who hardly ever used ICT, had never connected globally, to become global education leaders in their own right. I've seen people go from being, go from humble teaching positions to go, move into new, more global educate, more, um, more global leadership roles within their schools. And indeed, many of our teachers have gone on to win uh, national and state awards for their work. Um, partly, in, uh, partly, I would partly attribute that to their development of their skills within the global classroom community. Um, these people have taken the time, given themselves the time to to learn to develop their relationships with other teachers and to grow. Um, as Jennifer Klein recently wrote, we're running a marathon, we're not running a sprint. It's not something that you need to do overnight. 
and I think that is one of the greatest lessons I've learned. And finally, is it is absolutely essential that if you're going to involve yourself in global education, you need to link your curriculum to the project. Now, our most successful projects are projects which teach our students to explore, but also to actually take action on social and global issues. This is where I'd like to see global classroom going in the years to come. We are starting to get a glimpse of what this community is capable of. We've gone from projects which basically involve students comparing their lives and cultures to projects which encourage them to question, to collaborate, and to actually make a real world difference. You know, they, we've got students raising money for rhino charities, raising money for water filters, um, for students in the pool. Students, in many cases, have actually met over Skype and have a real human connection with. Um, this, I hope, is just the beginning. It's only time will tell. All right, I'm going to throw over the mic and the whiteboard. And you're more than welcome, if you have questions, uh, comments, um, you're more than welcome to take the mic or leave a, uh, leave a note on the board or drop the mic. Well, that stopped them in the tracks, Michael. This is Carol speaking. I wanted to voice my thank you for a truly inspiring session today. I had no idea that such innovative projects were happening uh, like those that you've mentioned today. And I really think it's something that more of our teachers should know about. And I mean teachers across the spectrum. So thank you very much for sharing. Probably need to give the mic for those who uh, want to speak. So just raise your hand and we'll know who to give it to. Okay, I, I'm grabbing the mic for a second. If anybody, yeah, so I'll give you the mic in a second. I just want to say that I've been to, I guess, two or three of Michael's presentations, and each one is more awe inspiring than the last. So go ahead. Yeah, I was actually going to say something similar to that, Joe, that Michael's talks that he gives are very, very well organised and he gives so much information and it's so easy to take part in these global collaborative activities by just going to the global classroom wiki space and finding one to join. Um, things that you can go that are just the one-offs where you just have to give a reply and that's it you've taken part in it and then you just start connecting and reading and seeing what others are saying and doing through to the ones that can take a lot longer. Well done Michael. Such a great change since meeting you the first time many years ago. It's hard to believe that I've come so far in such a short space of time. Um, but basically, that's the result of the people that I'm privileged to work with, the innovative thinkers and doers. But yeah, it's global education is something that is well worth exploring. You start small. You know, we start with the simple connected projects and then we move on to the bigger issues. Um, it comes down to relationships and commitment to 
to give it a go, to take the risks. Um, I know I've certainly taken some huge risks. Um, but you take the risk and you never know. You have to do um, even doing things like taking part in Earth Hour or Earth Day or um, Blog Action Day at nice, simple, global things that you can um, join in that don't take a lot of time but get you connecting in that global situation as well. Anyone else want to grab the mic and, and say anything? I think Michael has one more slide. Okay, when, when you're ready, Michael, I'm sure if anyone wants to um, ask a question and they don't think of it quite, they can put up their hand and we'll give them the mic again. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to give you a moment to read a quote which I truly do relate to. I like to define myself as a global educator, a learner and a dreamer. But as the song goes, I may be a dreamer, but I know I'm not the only one. And for the Aussies here, I'm heading to Sydney, which I'm extremely excited about for the Flat Connections Conference. If you're in Sydney or are able to attend that conference, I'd highly recommend it, and I look forward to seeing some of you there. Thank you for everyone who came. It's been a real pleasure to come and present today and to help. But thank you for the opportunity to share my story. Um, it's one that I take a great deal of pride in with the help of people around the world who have got me to this point. So thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. I, I think we should all put our hands together in the Blackboard Collaborate way and give Michael a big round of applause. Um, and, okay, don't forget, Michael's even put his contact details up, but he didn't get that far quite. Okay, if anybody's looking for the applause button, it's in the drop down under the smiley face on your um, on your tools below your name. And I'll just finish off with the um, little bit at the end that says, "Don't forget there's going to be an exit survey and." Also, don't forget to leave the room, please, so that the, the recording archives and it can be put up for people to visit. Um, I'm going to drop the mic in case Michael wants to grab it for anything else. But thank you again, Michael. That's been terrific.